Okay, the purpose of this video is to show you how to create an application inside of Application Express. I have logged into my student workspace and I am on the home page. I'm going to click the Application Builder icon. When I click this, I'll be brought to the Application Builder uh, home page and up here on the right hand side, I'm going to click the Create button and then I'm going to choose to create a database application and I am going to create this application from scratch uh, I'm going to name this particular application my ship application I'll take the application number that the interface gives me and then uh, the schema should just auto populate with the one that is associated with my workspace okay now it's going to give me the opportunity to add some basic pages and I'm going to start by adding uh, at least one page and it's going to be a form actually I'm going to select a tabular form and then I'm going to base it off of my ship tab table so go ahead and click that and add page and then I'm going to go ahead and also create a tabular form for my uh, cruise table so I'm going to go ahead and click the cruise tab and add that page and then I'm also going to create a tabular form for my passenger table so I'll go ahead and click the passenger tab table as well and add that page okay now that I've defined uh, the three pages I want to start with I'm going to go ahead and click next and uh, I'm going to go ahead and want a level of tabs to show each of my pages with I'm not going to copy any shared components from other applications and uh, now it's going to ask about uh, the authentication scheme that I want to use for my particular application I'm going to go ahead and uh, go with the application express which means that anytime I sign into this application I'll need to use my uh, same user ID that I logged into uh, my workspace with. I could also define other uh, users within Application Express uh, administration panel that could log into this application. Uh, it's possible to say no authentication, but uh, I generally just don't recommend that as, as good practice to have uh, open applications on the internet. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and allow all the rest of this stuff to default, so I'm not going to make any entries here. Now it's going to want me to choose a theme for my application. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just select this uh, theme 2. And now it's just going to confirm that I want to go ahead and com uh, create this application. So I'm going to go ahead and click the create button and now uh, I have a basic application put together here my ship application and uh, it has the pages that uh, I defined for it as well as the automatically generated login page and uh, just to confirm that uh, that it's working uh, I can go ahead and click run application now I'll need to uh, log in alright and now we can see uh, I have already pre-populated some of these tables so we can see that the data from these tables is being uh, displayed on the forms that we created for them so you can see my my ship tab my cruise tab and, uh, and my passenger tab are all being uh, pre-populated and um, that's a good thing and we will begin to make some modifications to these forms here in just a second I'm just gonna back up a little bit there 
log into my workspace and I'm going to go back to the application builder panel and then I'm going to select my ship application. Okay, next we're going to explore how to make some basic modifications to uh, some of our forms. So we're going to start with our ship tab and we're going to explore the interface that we have here uh, for creating our pages. So there's a number of different components that are visible here that allow you, uh, you know, various degrees of controls over, over different uh, things that are happening with your page. What's mostly going to be important to you is this regions tab right here. And this is where we can uh, do things like adjust the queries to populate the form and then get at the columns that are uh, displayed on our form. So let's first just take a look at this uh, ship tab uh, hyperlink here inside of our regions and see what we get. Here we can see the query that's being uh, generated in order to create our form. And one thing we happen to know about our table, the uh, form has uh, looked at the database and realized that the ship name is the primary key. And so it has gone ahead and created a display column uh, for ship name because it's assuming that we will be managing our primary key through an automated fashion. Now, uh, for this particular page, that's not actually the case. So I'm going to go ahead and actually just delete this column right here and uh, just keep the ship name column and not have an additional column for uh, displaying that value. So after doing that, I'm going to go ahead and click Apply Changes. And then it'll bring us back to where we started and we can see that uh, there weren't any errors uh, related to us making that update. Next, I'm going to click on the report hyperlink here in regions, and this will actually take me to uh, the area where I can see the columns that are going to be displayed on my form here. So the first thing you'll notice about this ship name, if we scroll over here, is that we'll see that it's not checked to actually show up. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and, and check that box to make sure that it shows. And then the other thing we're going to do is click this edit pencil here. And we're going to go in and actually change the uh, field type here. So right now it's listed as hidden. We're actually going to make it a text field so that we can enter data into this field as we go along. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and click apply changes there. Now the other thing you'll see is we've got these column headings that were auto-generated off of the column names. We're going to want to go ahead and change a few of these here. So for my ship uh, service entry uh, date column. I want uh, a little more friendly label here. So I'm going to go ahead and enter service entry date. And then I'm going to change this column's heading to passenger capacity. And then I'm going to enter crew capacity here. And next, um, I'm, I'm happy with all of these uh, column headings now. The next thing I want to do is actually go ahead and create some, uh, some lists that I can use to auto-populate my fields when I enter my form. So I'm going to click Apply Changes here and, and show you what I'm talking about. Up here we can see this button to run our application. I'm going to go ahead and run it. And now you can see when we come into our ship tab here, over here where we have uh, two fields, the ship lifestyle and the ship registry, which we know we had created constraints for on our database. Now. Um, being as we have these constraints, it would be handy for our end users to just have a select list that won't violate those constraints on the database. Otherwise, if I were to come in here and try and change this ship registry to something that uh, violated the constraint on the database, 
we're going to get an error message back from the database that, uh, that that's not okay. So I'm going to go ahead and change that back and show that once we are not violating the constraints, uh, everything is fine. But what we're going to want to do is actually create a list of values that we can use in these columns. So in order to do that, uh, we're going to go ahead and go back to our back to our form or back to our development area. Okay, now that I'm back to our development area, I'm going to click on the ship application again. And I'm going to click on our ship tab page. Then I'm going to click on our report. And I'm going to take a look at uh, how we would go about entering a list of values. So for our ship registry, we can see as we come down here and look at the display as column attribute, we can actually pick a number of different uh, select lists or, or pop-up list of values. And we're able to define a list right here uh, in this interface, which uh, if I were to select a static list of values, I could go ahead and put it down here. Uh, we're also able to do a query-based one, which would allow me to write a SQL query against the database to bring this list back. Or, uh, I think most importantly, we can use a named list of value. And uh, this is going to be the one that I'm fond of because that allows us to reuse our list of values across uh, various pages and even applications if we chose to. So in order to take advantage of that, we actually have to back up a little bit to our application development page here and click on this shared components. Now when I come into this shared components, you'll see all of these uh, things that are available for all the pages in the application to share. And what we're interested in is this list of values one. So I'm going to go ahead and click that and we're going to create a new list of values and we're going to create this list of values from scratch. Uh, we're going to call this ship registry so it's easy for us to identify and we're going to go ahead and make this a, a static list and then you can see that we are presented with a page that gives us a display value and a return value. Now what that means is it's possible for us to have say a text-based display value but a numerical based uh, return value uh, that actually gets written back to the database and the advantage of that is should we decide to change the name of a value we don't necessarily have to go through all the tables and, and change the actual numerical value that is stored there. For this particular list of values we're not going to concern ourselves with that for the moment. So uh, I know that the ship registry has uh, several different values that we can use. So I'm just going to go ahead and enter these in quickly. Okay, now that I have those entered, if I don't uh, enter anything into the return value column, that means uh, that the database will actually have these display values written back to the table column that is using them. And for this particular list of values, we're going to go ahead and say that's okay. So I'm going to create this list of values. And then while I'm at it, I know there's a, a couple other list of values that we're going to be interested in as we uh, go through our application. So I'm just going to go ahead and create those right now. So the next one I know that we're going to have is a special request um, list of values. So I'm going to go ahead and create this list. And again, I'm just going to populate this with the same values that we used in the database constraint for this particular column. Now that I have those values entered, I'm just going to go ahead and click the create list of values. Uh, the next list of values I know we're going to need is the ship lifestyle. Okay, so now that we've created these uh, list of values, we're going to go ahead and go back to our application page. And we are going to click on the ship tab again. And we're going to click on the report link in our region section. 
and then we're going to go ahead and enter this list of values here. So for the ship registry, I'm going to say that this is based on a named list of value, and then I'm going to pick this ship registry list of values and apply the changes. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the ship lifestyle. And we're going to again select the named list of values and select the ship lifestyle. And the other thing that I'm going to want to do here is actually change the order of our columns a little bit. So when I created my table, I may have uh, not quite got the columns in there in the order I wanted. So uh, what I'm going to do is actually move these around by using these arrows right here. So I'm going to move the ship registry up underneath the ship size. Oops. And then I'm going to move our ship lifestyle down to the bottom of our form. And then I'm, uh, I'm happy with the rest of those, so I'm going to go ahead and click Apply Changes. Now another thing uh, I'm actually going to want to make sure I do is a little bit of formatting on some of these columns. So I know that the passenger capacity and the crew capacity are going to be uh, values that I'm going to want formatted to uh, use commas in between the thousands. So here I'm just going to go ahead and click this number date format and select this format here that shows a, a comma format. And then I'll just go ahead and, and copy this format mask out. And now I will go back to my, uh, sorry. Now I will go uh, back to the passenger capacity field and I'll just paste that format in there as well. Oops, looks like it didn't pick it up for me. We'll just go ahead and uh, select that format again, apply our changes, and now we should be able to, to go to our uh, form that we've created and see that all of these uh, changes are, have been applied here. All right, so we can see now that uh, our uh, passenger capacity and crew capacity have got a comma formatted number in there. Looks like I forgot that I needed to do the same thing to the ship size, so we'll get that here in just a second. We can see that we have a, a drop-down list for our ship registry and our ship lifestyle now. So really about the only thing we have left to do is go back to this, uh, to this ship size. So down here on the bottom you can see I have this ability to jump right into the edit panel. So we're going to jump back to the edit section of our page and go back and find our ship size field, click the edit pencil, and then we are going to change the number format to match the comma separated uh, format that we have on our other number fields. And that completes the editing of our form and we now have it uh, set up the way we want it.